chance for many people to tap into great resources that they couldn't do before. And it gives you, as a user of BitMinutes, something that you can use to help others in a very practical way. A person who does that many, many times in many ways is our next guest that's joining us right now. His name is David Drake. He's the chairman of LDJ Capital, and he joins us from his offices there in New York. David, good to have you with us today. Uh, thanks for having me over. I'm looking forward to talking to you and letting people know about my background. Yes, indeed. Well, tell us a little bit about your background, and particularly in light of what you have done in helping so many people in hospitality, in real estate, energy, and now, of course, in ICOs, those initial coin offerings and crypto. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, first of all, I was born and raised in Stockholm, Sweden, and I came over on scholarships to the U.S. where I stayed for the last 25 years. Of those 25 years, it's been in New York mainly, and uh, I had a chance to get involved with many different businesses and investments. We bought, you know, real estate both nationwide and high rises that we own in Manhattan currently. And we've had a venture capital division for over a decade where we kept investing in venture capital opportunities. And we've been involved with oil and gas and energy and TMT. And over the years, I had a chance to lobby Congress in 2011 and 12 to support the Jobs Act which allowed us to start advertising to raise capital. Uh, that in turn, you know, allowed me to learn about the industry and uh, write maybe 500 articles for Forbes, Huffington Post, and Wall Street Journal. Fast forward till today, last couple of years, a lot of these ICOs came to me and said, help us out. You have a long history having been invited to the White House, having spoken at Parliament in the UK about how to create, you know, funds for your company. You know, your publication, the Soho Loft Media Group that we have has been writing hundreds, well, actually a thousand articles on how to raise capital globally. So they asked me to help them out to, in their quest for ICOs over a year and a half ago. And consequently, I managed to save them a lot of money and help them be successful. I've been fortunate enough to advise over a hundred of them over the last year and a half. And uh, 50 of them has, had raised over $1.5 billion in the ICO space itself. But look, you know, I'm a board advisor. I'm not somebody who's fundraising. I've always been a board advisor putting in a couple hours a month to support them. And I've been very fortunate to have picked the right ones that actually ended up raising a lot of capital. So, you know, my venture capital turned into focusing on crypto over the last couple of years, and it's pretty exciting times. It certainly is. We're seeing a lot of change. And as we look at where we are today in 2018, it is not 2017. It's a completely different market. And we are concerned about that. What do you see happening today? And what are your greatest um, opportunities that you see and some of the greatest challenges in 2018 versus what we saw in 2017? Well, in 2018, we've seen that most companies and ICOs abroad have decided not to market or try to get people to buy tokens in the U.S. because of the uncertainty. I think security tokens and the certainty that the SEC and FINRA will come out with later this year will give guidance how to deal with securitized tokens, at which point Wall Street will get a push because shareholder value can be increased by having tokens generating revenue. And I think that's going to be the next 18 months opportunity where corporate America, Fortune 1000, and private companies can start saying, hmm, hold on a second, I have short shareholders, I have 20 years history, I might have millions of buyers and consumers, and like the airlines, we have loyalty programs. So they're gonna say, well, wait a minute, we can actually add value by creating a blockchain-based loyalty program or ad network. I think that's what we're gonna start seeing. We're gonna see real businesses getting into this space who's been around for a long time, just like BitMinutes, and just saying, hmm, that makes perfect sense. We already have an established business and network and following. Yes, I like the way you look at that. And as a matter of fact, as I was preparing for this interview, looking at what you have done, you've got a wealth of wisdom, wealth of information on how you select various companies and ICOs going through which coins. Matter of fact, I'd like to create a hypothetical because you get a lot of people coming to you saying, hey, we're wonderful, et cetera. Let's suppose you had a group of people coming to you with this uh, hypothetical Terry coin. Okay, use my name here, that Terry coin, which does not exist. This is hypothetical. And I say, oh, we're wonderful. We're going to cure cancer. We're going to feed the poor. We're going to stop all wars. Our coin is wonderful. I walk into your office and your team is there. You are there now. You don't want to go either extreme because on one hand, you want to don't want to say no to everyone. You miss out on a lot. But you can't say yes to everyone because uh, I don't think you have unlimited funds. So I would be interested in looking at your insights. What criteria, what filters do you use for 
our hypothetical Terry coin or any other business venture you're looking at for this? Well, as a venture capitalist the last 15 years in my family office, we made a decision to, you know, like everybody else that are in the space, they're always going to say it's the team. But I want to narrow it down a little more. I mean, of course, we want to make sure it's a scalable marketplace and that the competition is not uh, excessive. Uh, but when you go to the team, I think it's very important to us and many others that it's not necessarily just only the team and the fact that they have had an exit before and they understand shareholder value and they have built businesses in the past. Because you have entrepreneurs who will do it the first time and make a lot of money. It's more so that you have somebody, especially since we're activists, that listens. Because we've seen a lot of groups take money and disappear. And if they, don't, if they stop listening to your advice, then you've just done money. And that's the difference between passive and active investors. And we like to be active investors in that aspect. Yeah, very good. Well, those are, for those of you watching this, think about that. Those criteria are very important in the decisions that you're making and where you're moving forward. And David, one of the things that you and I are both excited about and see a lot of opportunities is with BitMinutes. The opportunities for people maybe in a third world country that have their cell phone, we can tap into the assets that are on there and right. give them a loan, real live help on that. What are you most excited about as you look at BitMinutes and what separates it from other good offerings that are out there in the space today? I think the biggest uh, opportunity and unfair advantage is Bitmin has been around for several years. And they're not a startup per se, but they've had a long history with entrepreneurs who's been behind it for a long time. And I think that establishes that they already have a footprint in the marketplace and understanding and current clients and customers. Yeah, it seems like there's a much better opportunity there with that. Now, another thing that's overshadowing the market right now is we see we want to make sure that we have the proper regulation. We have things that are in place that make it safe, so, as you've said so eloquently many times before. That's why we had the SEC formed back in the 1930s, putting it together. But also, as I think you very astutely said, that sometimes regulators can be a little too impetuous. They can uh, try to do the right thing but go too far. What's the right balance that you see for uh regulating, making sure that coins are safe, and at the same time, we don't stifle good opportunities in the future. Well, what we did during the Jobs Act days in 11 and 12, and I personally was lobbying for Congress, both the House of Representatives and the Senate, and with Pat McHenry, we were able to pass the Jobs Act's crowdfunding law for equity specifically. At that time, we ended up speaking to the SEC and FINRA literally every week for almost four years until the law was passed into effect. And I think that showed us that if you collaborate and interact with them and listen to what their concerns are and address it, then in a collaborative manner, you move forward much faster as opposed to clashing heads and fighting, but rather informing each other what's possible and finding a, a middle ground that works for everybody. Somehow I think I see a lot of years of wisdom and experience leaking through on that. The idea of collaboration rather than what's much easier is to disagree and clashing heads. Much better to say, wait a minute, well, you're trying to obtain this goal. We're trying to obtain this. Let's work together. Let's find ways creatively that we can work together. Is that kind of the best approach you've seen? Yes, it's been the most constructive approach. Otherwise, it just ends up making lawyers a lot of money. Exactly. The lawyers went out of it, but the rest of us don't. Well, in closing, as we look at the opportunities that are there with BitMinutes, what would you say to a person who's watching go, hmm, I'm kind of interested in that. It seems nice. What would you say is a good logical next step or next steps, plural, that you would encourage them to look into? I would just advise them that research online, just like you're watching this video, research about the company and see what else is out there just so you understand the marketplace. Very good. Any final words that you would leave to a world that's wondering about craziness in the ICO? We're jumping over to most everyone's favorite website now, CoinMarketCap, and looking at what's going on rather than going, oh my goodness, it's going down, or oh gee, it's going up. What would you say would be a good way to approach this? Well, the market's been up and down 20 to 30 percent every week for the last year. So it's easy for me not to look at it. And, uh, you know, just take your time and read, study listen and get all uh, you know access to you know news like this and other places where you can follow and understand you know what's happening in the marketplace because you're going to have to have a basic understanding and feel comfortable so conferences attending uh, shows like this is one way to help yourself 
David Drake with LDJ Capital. Thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate you being here and appreciate what you have done to help so many for so many years. Thank you, sir. Thank you for doing this show. I appreciate it. We're going to follow up with some NASDAQ shows in the future. So stay in touch. Sounds good. And for those of you watching this, think about those words that you have just heard from a very wise man who knows a lot. You want to look at what's going on. Go for collaboration. Look at those features that he talked about. You, this is one of those videos. You want to go back, rewind it, and watch it again. Click on that button, go back and see it again, and take some notes on it. For Bit Minutes TV, I'm Terry Brock. Thank you very much for joining us.